gentlemen, we are back. And no, I won't have the camera on me today because I'm absolutely feeling horrible because I had a rough day day before yesterday. No, today I had a rough day. So we're going to be discussing Tyson versus Ali debate. Plain and simple. We're going to let it loose. I want to hear what everybody has to say, what their opinions are, how they feel about if they were in their prime. If they were in their prime. How would... Um, if they were... I don't know. Hold on. Oh, like the wrong one. Is something wrong? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Okay. There we go. So I mean, like you guys can start it up again. Welcome to TNT Photon HQ. We're here with a Tyson Ali debate. We got our co-host, the beautiful and lovely, talented Mika, and we have the wonderful mercenary, the man that you love to hate and hire. Captain Kenny, the mercy. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Count Captain Kenny. Kenny. Count Don't Kenny. look at my face. <laughs> Don't look at my face. <laughs> Count Kenny, a.k.a. Firefly, a.k.a. Man for Hire, a.k.a. Let me see. A.k.a. The um the Mop Assassin, a.k.a. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm hell with a mop. Don't look at my face. <laughs> Cover up real quick. Yeah. yeah right? <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, but um, to start off the conversation, if they were both in their prime, I don't know. With Tyson and Ali, I look at it as like brawn versus brain. Um, you know, like um, Tyson was always a bully in the ring, always, and um, I I think that Ali is more. Skilled than Tyson is. So, um, like, if, in my opinion, if you ask me, I think Ali would have won the fight. Hmm. All right. I think I think Ali was a great boxer, but Tyson was a better killer because Custody Amato trained him to have speed and power in one swift package. Because if you look at Tyson's body, he didn't have the long arms. He wasn't tall. He mm -hmm. was a short, stocky guy. So the peekaboo style formulated with all the head movement, the constant movement, moving inwards, hooks, and just peppering the body before killing the head. I think that would have made Tyson all but murder Ali in the ring. Because you say bully, I say it was more like a calculated bully. Because everything he did was, was pretty much paced. If you look at how he moved, he, he, he would do the custody of model switch. Where he'd switch mid-stance, which means he'd go orthodox to southpaw right away as he's judging when someone comes in from a blow, so he would automatically hit you with a left or a right as you're coming in. So a lot of Tyson's power wasn't just his straight ability to knock you out. It was his elusiveness and quickness. And Ali's rope-a-dope would have been the end of him because Tyson, Tyson would have gone body hunting, and, he, and his body blows would have just destroyed him. Because uh, there's even a video. If you look at look it up, uh, Custody Amato yeah, and Muhammad you know, Ali. You know yeah, what, though? Like, I, I, uh, I like it. Yeah, um, Tyson has a lot of power, but he's not as swift as Ali was. Are, are you sure? If you, mm -hmm. uh, at, at full speed, Tyson was uh, a I lightning. Tyson could hit you three times and make it sound like one. That was a scary thing. If you, if you see him work those big yes. uh, yes, bags, he just rat, 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 like a machine gun. And, and his head movement was, was something that, that Bob and a Weaver, you hardly saw anyone as a heavyweight move like that. Joe Frazier had a similar kind of thing, but Tyson's was just machine like sharp the way Cuss had him. This isn't post. This is this is prime Tyson when Cuss had him. So I'm thinking, you know, this is this is way, way when he had the head movement and the, the looseness down, because after Cuss left, Tyson was more or less a head hunter. He would go swinging for the head and throw more body into it. But when he had Cuss in his prime, he was he was just more like a formulated machine because Cuss would drill these certain specific movements into him and he would just mirror him. Mm. I agree. I agree. I think this is, and this is just my opinion. I there, it, there's, it's a no-brainer. I think Tyson literally probably would have put um Ali in the hospital. And I love Ali. I love Ali, but Tyson had a certain animalistic ferocity about him in the ring that just like, in it, it just ensued fear in 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 his opponent. In his opponent, I've watched every Tyson fight that has ever been. And Tyson, I've watched every Ali fight there has ever been. I'm a big boxing fanatic. And um, and, and actually, I love Titan sports, period. But um, 
I don't think there is um I don't think there's any comparison between the two. I don't think as much as I respect Ali, you know, but uh nah. I don't think if you, nice. now Jason, if you Derek remember the Mitch, fought, Derek, remember the Mitch Green fight? Yes. The Green Mitch, do you remember how never been hit there were there were fucking life. Not just that, there were specific moments where Tyson was playing with the guy in terms of dodging and elusiveness, where it was almost Matrix, like where he'd just start smiling at the dude and just come up swinging right after ducking down after a flurry and just land and clip him. Right. So there was all kinds of elusiveness going on. Even Tyson said himself, my greatest asset isn't my power, it's my ability to be elusive. It's him right. being able to slip and move. But no, he had hmm. power though. Tyson had power. Tyson had a lot of power behind his punches. Yeah. He had a lot of power. There were times, sometimes, and I mean, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. There were um, instances where Tyson's hook was so tight it looked like a fucking elbow. It oh, yeah, yeah. Was, it possibly was an elbow. I'm not even going to lie. It possibly was an elbow. It, it, yeah, because he had them, he could get away with it because he had them little arms. He had them short, yeah. stubby T-Rex arms. So when he do that lunging left on you, that lunging left hook, it looks like the elbow's clipping you right in the face, too. What was, the, uh, what was the what was the guy Tyson for it? Where like I mean, he literally f made this guy fall flat back. Was it do the afro? Because there's a camera guy's name. No, no, do the no. afro. No, Took a tremendous. He, he floored. He almost killed Trevor Burbick. I think. Remember? Yeah. For for that belt, for one of his first belts too, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yep. Yeah. He almost killed him. He almost killed him. If the ref had like the, the, the man suffered, he like he had him stumbling. Damage. Yeah. Exactly. And I used to love me myself. I used to love. Believe me when I tell you, I love Muhammad Ali's like um, entertainment in the ring. But essentially, look where it got him. Because all those hits to the head and letting people like you know take take punches to the head to amuse the crowd and all that stuff and dancing around, it kind of like messed up his mind. Right. Or like, and, you know, and going he, going back to Ali in that in that video with Cus Diamato, Cus was right. telling him, "A uh, Frazier's gonna get you by doing this," and he was doing. Proto Tyson shit. He was getting in tight with his hands up, bobbing and weaving. And he said, Frazier's going to catch you just like this. And Ali was saying, oh, I'm too fast. But what happened? Frazier caught him just like that. He slipped in and caught him. So if uh, if Custy Amato's prototype peekaboo style was was already proving to kind of be an undoing for Ali, Tyson was the prime example of that style. He would have right. murdered Ali. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I'm sorry, but I have to agree with you on this one, Kenny. I think Tyson, in both fighters in their prime. In the prime, for sure. I mean, I love I, 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 I love Tyson. I really do. I like both fighters, as a matter of fact. But I don't know. It was like Ali always gets me. I guess. I don't know. But, like, in this case, I'm outnumbered. <laughs> No, no, I still no. think that Ali would have won. <laughs> I'm offering your opinion. We're just going by, you know, by statistics and stats, so on and so forth. Yeah. I mean, like me and myself. Okay, okay, okay. No, it's not a matter of being outnumbered. You're entitled to your opinion. <laughs> Different All right. opinions always All right. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I still think that I would have won. Um, what's the, what's the, um, what do you think is the best Tyson match that you've ever seen? Mm, which one? I used to honestly. I used to just love the fact that he was knocking motherfuckers out quick before they even get to sit down. Like I mean, like, and what I like is that it was this one interview that he gave. He says I'm, and everybody thought he was being disrespectful to Ali, and he wasn't. He said I'm not gonna be Ali. He said my job is to go in there and knock people the fuck out, and that's what. Yep. I, he said yep. I'm not the fuck out. And people I, I, took that as an insult to Ali. Yeah, they thought he was being insulted. He said, "I'm not gonna be like Ali." He said, "Look at him, look at him, look at him." He can't, he can't even say his name. And everybody thought he was like, "Oh, he's being disrespectful." He like, no, he's not. He says he's not gonna be a punching bag and do this rope mm -hmm. stuff. He said, "My job is to knock people out. That's what I do." He said, "I like knocking people out." <laughs> he said, "I like that." Yeah. <laughs> I loved him. I loved him for his pure ignorance sometimes. I loved him for his ferocity. I loved the way he would just like literally corner off the ring with people. He would like the bell ring, but like, bang, he already on him. Now, you yeah, know, for sure. Already on him. <laughs> and, and, and look look how he used to come to the ring. He didn't wear a robe. He, he came in with just a towel, no socks on, just the boots, yep. plain yep. black, yep. like a gladiator, ready to go. <laughs> already, already worked up a sweat. Yeah, and what I like is that sometimes you can see like he cursing while he fighting and shit. Like, yeah. I told you, 
<laughs> just like his taunts, his taunts alone. That's what does it for me. He, like one of his in the um, other opponent. If you want to see, I, I think the best example is that was a Mitch Green match fight because yes, they they yes. went into that fight hating each other completely, mm -hmm. especially Mitch Green. Thank and you. And then Tyson went I in there Mitch and Green, picked I him apart. Say, Mitch Green was the best fight. Go ahead, continue. Yeah, I said if you watch it, Tyson just picked him apart. He took everything Mitch was throwing at him, and he had an answer for it. And then some. It, it was it was a great fight just to watch uh, Tyson showboat almost. Yeah, yeah. Mm. you can tell like, but that, but like. I would say like the first, the first, the first two rounds, or like the like the first round, Tyson was literally yeah. trying to murder that man. He was literally trying to hurt him, like kill him. I think he was trying to probably kill him. Oh, yeah. oh, after after that fight, uh, I had actually saw uh, Tyson's live show, uh, Undisputed Live, and he actually talks about how like I think a month or two after the fight, they had a street fight where Mitch Green had uh, come up to him on the streets, and Tyson uppercut him so high he went flying and hit the roof of a car. So he got in the streets too. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah, my no, because I no, I remember the Tyson Bruno fight where, like Tyson, like now, now mind you, like Bruno, Bruno is bigger than like way right. bigger than Tyson. Man, and mean. I just they were training partners though, so they already knew each other. That was a thing. A lot of people didn't know they were they were, they were training partners. They used to, they were they used to spar with each other. That was one of that was Tyson's old uh, warm up partners for sparring. Oh, and Tyson hit an uppercut so hard on Bruno that he it just totally like lifted him off the ground. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Kenny. Like that's one thing about Tyson. His punches are very powerful. It's like yeah. a loaded shotgun when he swings exactly. it. Right. Exactly. Right. I think um, even Green even said Green that fought, Green even said he said he's never been hit that hard before in his life, never. Mm. Never been hit that hard before. He said mm, that mm, man. Mm, mm. He said uh, who was it? I think um, uh, who was it that said that Tyson hit his heart? No, that was that was George Foreman. That um, they said that George Foreman hit as hard as a donkey kick, and uh, somebody that had fought Tyson that, that had previously sparred with um, Foreman. Said the only person that he ever felt similar power to that was was um Foreman, and um right, right. yeah, like but um Mike Tyson, he said the man is a beast, straight beast. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, and and what he did, he took his uh, his shortness, and he made an advantage because just he got in and slipped on you. Yeah, exactly. And he was like he would he would always go under and come up, go under, mm -hmm. come up, like you know what I'm saying. But like um, he would go in, and that's what that's what I think would intimidate a lot of boxers is that he came, he came at you. He didn't like try to dance around the ring or anything like that. He wanted you. He wanted you. I I, I used to just love this. I I totally used to love seeing Tyson. I, I enjoyed seeing Tyson fight. I mean, even talking about it now gets me excited. I'm after this match, after this uh show. <laughs> You're right. After this show, I'm gonna go uh, watch some more Tyson, some old Tyson fights and stuff like that. I loved watching Tyson. He inspired me to get into martial arts, start studying jujitsu, and take up some boxing. Believe me when I tell you, because yeah, because he was nice. I'm telling you, Tyson wasn't a big guy, but he he was just wide and stocky, and he would just get in and just tear shit up. That's why I loved him. Yeah, because you know he was he was a, a fighter going against boxers. Yeah, he was a straight a definition fighter. He wasn't a sport boxer. He was there not to score points. He was there to put you on the ground. And then like just to see the hate in his face sometimes. Yeah, he'd yeah. He'd be like, like you know they have still. Well, you want to fight somebody after? Yeah, they had stills of Mike Tyson, and I mean like he never closed his eyes. Like they would be wide open. Like he, you know how some fighters. Like they'll clutch, like they clench their eyes a little bit while they're swinging. Mm -hmm. This guy's eyes would be open, like a psychopath. Like he just want, he wanted to see something break. He wanted to make sure it connected. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, every every punch don't with bad intentions. Yeah, man. Yeah. So I mean, like honestly, there's no. I, I, this is just my opinion, and I know there are hardcore Ali fans out there that'll be like, "Oh, no, 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 I leave, I leave." I mean, you're entitled but to that opinion. Me myself, I'm going by what I've seen and by right. what by the experiences that that I've seen each fighter or like the fighting prowess of each fighter, and there's no comparison. I think I think Tyson actually would have probably put that man in the hospital, really, to be honest. 
I, I see the rope of dope being Ali's undoing because Tyson would have gone body hunting for that. He would destroy that man's ribs. That rope of dope shit wouldn't work on Tyson. I've seen Tyson like he and if you notice, whenever Tyson would fight, he would literally corner he he did the he would always make sure it's in a triangular pattern. Like he yeah. would corner you off in the ring in a triangular way. Like to where like only thing you got behind you is the middle was like the corner of that ring. That's it. He always made sure he did that. If you watch his fight, every time he quickly ran up to you and had you in like a little corner, that triangular corner. Mm -hmm. And, and he tried, body and shot he, set up to the uppercut. Exactly. And if you try to go to the left, he hooking you. You try to go to right. the right, he hooking you. You try to go under them, he uppercutting you. And then when he got in, it was just all elbows and fists. I don't give a fuck what nobody said. How <laughs> short those punches were too. Yes. You couldn't see yes. him coming because those short ass arms, man. Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, like, oh, since since we're on the subject of boxing, um, my question to you guys is, um, what do you think that is missing in boxing now that they had back then? There's no champs. There's no real champs. There's no real champs and no real heavyweight champs. You don't. Yeah, you don't have a lineage. You're right. Okay, that I can't agree with. And I love boxing. Absolutely love boxing. But there's right, no I real do. camps anymore. And I mean, like, who, I mean, and then, like, you know, like, what they consider, like, boxing now is too many, uh, there's too many rules to it. Not saying I want to see somebody die, but I, I mean, essentially, when I watch a Titan sport, I want to see people fight. I want to see blood. Like, honestly, the, the boxing matches that I used to watch growing up as a kid, when heavyweights fought, oh, yeah, afterwards, you saw noses laying on the left side of each oh, other's yeah. faces, busted lips. I mean, like cauliflower ears. Sometimes they're not up there, like yeah, they're not up there, like like um able to answer the announcer, like yeah, we're gonna go party now. And they said it. No, no. When I was coming up, they went to the hospital for real. You had some. You had a lot of boxes. Remember back in the day, you had a lot of boxes die inside the emergency room or die at the hospital and stuff like mm -mm -mm. that. And those little preliminary fights and shit like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, like when you, I'm coming up. And you remember Hearns and Hagler? Too. Yes. Bloodbath. Yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, what was that too? I think they increased the ounces of the gloves now because like when I was coming up, what were they like? Um, there was pretty much like wrapped knuckles that you were fighting with. Wow. Yeah, like, they're thin leather. Like like MMA gloves are four ounces. I think old school boxing gloves were closer to a six or something. They weren't eight or anything like that now. Yeah, like now it's a whole bunch of padding on the gloves and stuff like that. Where like before and like I mean, think about it. You got some of these boxes with the hands the size of plates. And they slipping them inside the glove and everything like that. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's one, bringing it back, that's one of the things Tyson said he used to do. He, the leather used to be so thin, he used to break it, break his knuckles through it. That's what he used to be doing. Exactly. You see him doing that shit with his hands because he's breaking his knuckles right through the leather so he can hit you with exactly. his bare hand. Exactly. Amazing. Like, you know, like um, they have some of his uh, gloves up for display. If you look on Google and you can see the knuckle print inside of the gloves. You yeah, know? broken right through. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. I mean, like, it, it, I, I love Tyson. Tyson was one of my favorite boxers of all time. He was the one that really got me into, like, loving boxing. I mean, like, yeah, you had, um, you know, we had Foreman and, you know, Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard and all that stuff. But Tyson was the one, I mean, like, all my friends and I, we would, like, literally gather around the cable TV and all that shit and watch him and everything like that. I used to just love how before it even started, it's over. People walking in the ring, motherfuckers go to sit down. <laughs> they already like throwing their tickets. I remember this one fight when he fought uh, 30 seconds. I forgot. It was 30 seconds, I think it was. Straight floored his ass. No, was it a minute? I think it was a minute. Was, I remember 30 seconds. Yeah, 30 seconds. The motherfucking, the, motherfucking, the motherfucking white people sitting in the front row because you know they, they love to see some black people knock each other to death. Of course. <laughs> like boom, 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 boom. Then walk, they was throwing their tickets up, up in the air. They was mad. They was mad. I loved it. I used to love I'm like, God. I remember as a kid, I used to be like, God, man, this nigga just really knocked this motherfucker on some street shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he really just knocked him, knocked him loose. I, I think that's what um Tyson is also known for, his first round knockouts. Yes, yeah, I love for sure. Him. Loved him. Loved him. Now, what I will say is that he had a problem with going the distance because every boxer isn't made to go to distance. You know what I'm saying? Some boxers 
box is good at it. But I mean, like when Tyson in his prime, he knew he his like I told you before. He said, I, it was one interview. He said, he said, all I think about is just going through them, just going through them. That's it. Yeah, going yep, through yep. them. There was times he would just hit, like he would be so punchy. Sometimes he'd be hitting them all in the chest, the throat, everywhere. He didn't even care, especially if they're going down. He hit back, yeah, back of the head, everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Balrog wins. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) 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 One, two. (laughs) Those matches are just fun to watch. They're just brutal beatings, man. I love them. Like, you know, you go on YouTube, they still got, um, you know, that. And, you know, the thing about YouTube is that they're becoming so, like, PC or, like, so censored now. Where, like, a lot of stuff I used to go on there, like, I used to look up greatest knockouts and all that stuff they're not yeah. even there no more but they You're still right. like some of tyson's greatest um knockouts and stuff like that man and i vegged on his knockouts one time for like an hour and some change i was like this man is an animal My, yeah, ali ESPN some, ali too, used to show the fights. strings man ali had some good fights but i mean he was not ne- i would say ali was never the same after that fight with oh god what's his name i think a japanese wrestler fucked up his leg so bad yeah me too and tony Inoki. Because all he did was kick at his legs from the guard position. And next, you know, there's all kinds of bruises. And I heard that caused all kinds of problems with circulation in his legs. So that right, his right. movement was never the same after. Right, right, right. But it was a boxer. I know Foreman. Foreman hurt him real bad, too. He fought Foreman. Was that the rumble in the jungle? Frazier fucked him up, man. Yeah. Yeah. He wanted me to be both. I remember. Yeah, Frazier I fucked remember Frazier fucked him up, too. Told him. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is almost a, a prototypical Tyson in a way it was exactly. crazy with the same kind of pressure. Exactly, and see that's the thing. Ali was like everybody talk about the rope dope. Rope rope dope don't work on everybody. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. And I don't think the rope dope would have worked on Tyson. I mean, Mika, you may think different. You know what I'm saying? And I understand where you're coming from. And yes, I do give Ali respect, but I don't think great he boxer. Yeah, an amazing boxer. He was a tactician. But sometimes tactics don't work against barbarians. I'm telling you. Yeah, you're, you're right. Tyson, no, I mean, the wall. Yeah, Tyson would take. <laughs> I've seen Tyson take hits just to get in, just to get in. Wow. As in, wow. Okay. I, yeah. Think about it, Mika. Think about some of his fights. Go back and look at some of his fights. Tyson would literally be chasing motherfuckers around the ring because he want to hit him. Yeah. On chasing the hit animal, straight animal. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm just keeping my mouth shut on the situation because no, like, don't, 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 don't speak just, your mind. By all means, speak your mind. I don't want to, you know, I don't want this to seem one sided. Like we're just jumping on. You and stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? By all means, speak your mind. I mean, um, I'm just speaking from facts and from okay. um, observation. And there's no, there's no, I don't know. It's absolutely no. I don't think so. I don't think so. I could be wrong, but I don't. Think. I don't know. You could be right too. So I heard you had a birthday, um, Mika. How, what you Did I? Oh, happy birthday! Thank you, thank you. I I done turned into the big four zero this year. Oh man, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. Mm-hmm. I can still pass for 28. I'm happy. Yeah, but I mean, you'll see. We can go to, right now. Go to, <laughs> it's fucked up today. You'll see. Yeah, <laughs> go wait, wait, you, yeah, wait, you'll go see. To, wait till you go try to do that all nighter. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Oh, you know what? I'm not even going to ask what the yeah, whole is. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> I, I think I can still handle that. I don't know. You'll see. I that can't. 40. 40 shit changes, man. It yeah, changes. Okay. It changes. Okay. okay. Yeah, right, don't worry. If you need some, I got some Viagra for you. You'd be all right. Viagra for what? <laughs> <laughs> what do I need that for? I'm a, I'm, a one, I'm a woman. I don't know what the fuck I need with Viagra unless I'm having Make you strong. Problems. 40, you 40 now. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're going to need it. For Viagra makes you strong. <laughs> You go, you're gonna go to have some you're gonna have go to have some shit and it's not gonna burn. <laughs> <laughs> Shifty action. <laughs> Shifty action. 
No, I think I'll be fine in that department. Thank you very much. No, nah, no. Nah, I appreciate. I pre I appreciate the thoughts and stuff. Don't worry, I'm gonna mail you some anyway. You can be like, thanks, man. I needed this, bro. He <laughs> <laughs> was right. He was right. He was right, man. I'm just mad. I'm just a little mad right now because they're up here talking about me and shit. But I'm gonna be ready. I'm gonna be ready next time. Man. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm crying. <laughs> so what happened? So what, what happened at your birthday party? I heard you got drunk with friends and yes, somebody poured liquor all over you. You woke up in the Woolworth bathroom. What happened? That's right. Yeah, there was a wet t-shirt contest and everything. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's up. If you believe that, I'll give you the Brooklyn Bridge for a dollar. <laughs> So what you do? What you do? Like what? What happened? Just, just, part? Oh, you don't want to talk about that shit. No, it's like, I, just, I, just drank, I just drank with friends. That's all I did. What else? Um, that was on Tuesday. There was a bit of a problem on Tuesday because I had the Die Hard movies and everything. My tablet had an HDMI um input, mm -hmm. but it was a. I needed a mini adapter. Right. 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 So like that was the only problem, but other than that, like somebody had um the Die Hard movies on DVD, so that was sweet right there. Um, last night, like you know, it was like family and friends, and we just um went to the club, and we just danced, we ate, we drank, we partied with the young kids, and we got a bottle. And wow. that was it. A bottle of effing vodka. What's your favorite alcohol to drink? I, my Johnny Walker, Black Label. What's your favorite alcohol, Kenny? I do not know the song. His thing is water. No, yeah, I'm, I drink water. Yeah, okay. Fire water. Fire water. Yes. <laughs> Fire water. Don't look at my face. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, like he ain't got the camera on right now, so he's saying, like, yeah, I'm drinking water. Like, yeah, you probably got a bottle of fireball on you right now. No, you just it's vitamin water. water. Vitamin water? <laughs> With what? It's red. It's red vitamin water. It's good stuff. It's, it's good. <laughs> okay, let's I let's drink get it here, pass. I don't drink good for you. I don't drink good it. For you. I don't smoke. I don't do shit. Now look at you. Good shit. Way to go. Yes. Good for good you. Good for you, man. I don't do shit. Because you know what the thing is, is that I have an addictive personality. And I know, like, that's why I never tried anything like cocaine or anything like that. Because I know if I was to try it, I'd be the super fiend out this motherfucker. I can't even stop <laughs> I, Man, I'd be knocking motherfuckers in the head every five minutes. I'd be stealing. Man, everybody's houses on this block would be cleared out. No bullshit. <laughs> and I'd be up there like, man, this messed up. You're crime in this neighborhood. Man, it's <laughs> I'd be done sold everybody. I think, bust I think everybody Danae, would be, Danae would be the type of person to rob your house and sell you your own shit. I'd be like, look, I found this. I mean, like, you know. <laughs> That's why I never tried it. Plus, anyway, too, when I was growing up, they scared the shit out of us with that drug shit. Like, I, I'm over here in Jersey. <laughs> No, nah, they used to like just <laughs> they, call it, they would call like these emergency like um auditorium um meetings and shit like that. And then they show us like real crackheads as dying and AIDS patients, and then they would show us that they I never forgot it was this movie. I'm telling you, it was this one, it was like a public service movie with um Morgan Freeman, where he was a criminal and he had got a hold of this guy, this this girl. And he was they, they fed her drugs and it was crazy. And then at the end of the movie, they threw in a dumpster. Like it was crazy, man. I'm Jesus. telling you. What movie was this? They're terrified. They says Morgan this. Freeman in there. Yeah, it's what a, is this? I'm telling you. I, and Wait, I, is it, I might have saw parts of this. Is Morgan Freeman a pimp? Is he a pimp? He's like, I know he was with this other dude, and he was he was mean as fuck in this movie. He was mean as fuck. And in the end, they threw the girl in the dumpster. Wow. Huh. Was this pre-electric company or, or, or what? No, after electric company. It's a roundabout because I was I kept telling everybody, I said, that's the man from the electric company. Like, you know, I was always one of them outspoken. Bro. And it was like shh. They telling me shh. I said, that's the man from the electric company. 
We're talking about violence. <laughs> sure. Like, is. But I'm telling you, they scared the shit out of us. It's like, if you do drugs, this will happen. They used to sometimes have like, um, I remember, I never forget, like um, I was in uh, sixth grade, was it? I think it was sixth or seventh grade. And they had this speaker come in and he was like a um, drug user. They had a male and a female one and they were drug users. And then, um, you know, they was telling them about, you know, this, that, and the other. They showed us like needles and all this other stuff and this, that, and the other. They made us walk up to the um, auditorium, like the podium and everything, or like pretty much uh, to the stage and look at all like the tables of drugs and paraphernalia and shit like that. And um, then they um, called another emergency meeting and shit like that. And whenever they would call these emergency meetings, usually it was like, we need to stop doing this, either stop fucking in the auditorium, pissing on the floors in the bathroom, like robbing mm -hmm. the teachers or whatever. But nah, they was like emergency meeting. And like, you know, and we go there and um, they was like, yeah, the, the, um, the lady was there, but the man wasn't. So, you know, everybody talking, talking. The lady was like, yeah, he died from an overdose. And they showed us pictures of him. I was like, what the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? I just be like, what the? I, <laughs> and then, I, you know, like, I was like, what the fuck? Like, they showed him literally. Because, like, you know, he signed off for this. Because I think, like, you know, he was working, like, some program or something like that. And, like, you know, if he, like, somehow or another, they were able to use his images of him when he died. Or, like, because I think he caught AIDS and then died or something. No, he od he OD'd and they showed him like dead, like literally dead in the morgue and everything. I was like, damn. Yeah. Through the whole journey. Yeah, I'm telling you, we that man, we grew up on some harsh shit over here in Jersey. Jersey ain't give a fuck. They really did. They didn't give a fuck. They didn't. So I mean, it's like when I see somebody my age, or pretty much like somebody that went to school with me. No, I don't judge them or anything like that, but they um, but like and they were in the same class as me and shit like that. I'm like, man, you saw that video and shit, nigga. What the fuck you get high for? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That shit ain't fuck with you. Uh, I remember, like, it was so bad to where, like, parents was coming to get their kids. Kids was crying and shit like that. You know, like, you know, because I mean, like, <laughs> you got to understand the 80s was a rough time, man. They ain't no, no, listen, like, I have a story to tell because, um, one of my family members have a friend who's like a major crackhead. So I was making, I was making. I, I'm all around crackheads now. Like they have. <laughs> I, I, I was making fun of him. Tell my yo, like you're a fucking crackhead. And he was like, I'm not a crackhead. I'm a crack smoker. I'm like what the fuck is the difference? Yeah, right. I'm not. So, you so a uh, uh, is a connoisseur? Is that any better? I'm a crack <laughs> smoker. <laughs> the high class one. What? Yeah, no, so I can no, stop so I can on it. Him. No, I just <laughs> was a top I hat. I to him one day that my aunt was still cracks up over. Um, I think he, he went out somewhere, and I had like some little like coconut jelly belly jelly beans. Oh man, they love sweets. They and love I, no, <laughs> he's a they love sweet. They love sweet. No, they'll kill you some sweet because I keep the high going. Yeah. I cut it up to make it look like it was crack. That's what's up, my nigga. That's what's <laughs> good up. shit. <laughs> Perfect. That's what's no, up. That's and, what's and I put up. a little That's bit. Good. I put a yeah. little bit on the floor, and when he came back, like this dude was fucking nuts. Like, oh my god, that's like it's everywhere. My aunt and I, we was in the bathroom just. I would have died laughing. I would have died laughing. Oh, that's perfect. And you know what? See, I'm so I'm so messed up. I'd have took a I'd have took a um I'd have took like an old crack pipe and just threw it next to that shit, make it seem like so he just starts smoking sugar. <laughs> oh man, we ain't shit. Man, but you know what? I, again, harkening back to like me never like trying drugs and shit like that. I think I smoked I smoked weed on my thirtieth birthday, and like it hit me so hard because I, I was work, I was working at um I was working at um this go go bar, and for mm -hmm. my thirtieth birthday, um this guy that used to bar back then he also used to do the books for the place. He was a he was a weed head, you know what I'm saying? And so he was like, "Yo, it's your birthday. Here, take a hit." That motherfucker gave me a hit of that shit. I was like, what the fuck? All I remember, like, I, w I was in my truck. People threw some money on me. Then I was in the alleyway by the dumpster talking to some girl. Then I then I went to the diner, this place called Don's Diner. I drove there. 
And I spent the night over this girl's house. I don't know what the fuck it happened, man. I, I just was all fucked up. Luckily, nobody robbed me. I, I, I think like, I have an inkling of what happened. Nobody robbed me though, because money was still in my um truck. And I mean, like, I you could you could see right into my windows. You know what I'm saying? Nobody busted my windows, no nothing. Okay. Okay. Wow. But it was like it was like spots. I could remember little spots of what had happened, but not really none of it. But I mean, I slept my ass off though. I slept my ass off the next day. Was you hungry? Mm, no, not really. Really? Mm, I just was like, I I just huh. felt good. I felt all right. Like everything gonna be all right. Like I'm good. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't feel like a, you know I didn't feel edgy or no shit like that. I just felt like cool as fuck like good stuff yeah. yeah i just was like whatever like you know people were talking to me i was waving them off and just like fanning myself and shit like that i remember that shit you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> you know kept so, licking kept licking my lips and shit i was like <laughs> fuck so I, I i don't know i guess there's no sense of giving you an edible then it's like a good sativa you was on good shit yeah, like no, this kid, this guy, he used to get like good shit, good shit, because everything happened on the side of the club. We used to work. I used to work at this place called Show Offs, right? It was a go-go mm -hmm. bar, and on the side of the bar was the dumpster, and that was where all the shit happened. By everything was by the dumpster, dumpster. You know what I'm saying? Oh, God. Yeah, like you know, like the, the CD shit would happen by the dumpster. <laughs> so you know, I, I know I was talking to this one girl. I remember, I know she used to get high and shit like that. Her pupils was dilated, like. <laughs> Looking like a fucking Disney character. I, she, I never uh, she had blonde. <laughs> she had blonde hair. She was like, Danae, Danae. Uh, I'm all up here trying to get my shit together and shit. She's like, Yeah, I'm gonna stay with you. I'll stay with you. We're gonna stay. I was like, Oh god, this bit. I now I know what it means by when somebody fucking up your high. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like it was just like I was just trying to get my shit together. It wasn't bad. I just wanted her to go for a second. Like, let me just get my shit together for a second, man. She wouldn't leave. So I just I just leaned back up against the wall and put my foot on a dumpster because it was one of the big blue ones with that 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 it's like these these big pieces that hang out the side or something like that. So I just put my foot put my my foot up there and just like lean back on the wall and I just let let her talk. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what's like now, now it's like marijuana now, is a huge business. There's, there's a, a friend of mine who has a company mm -hmm. called Tony Love, and yeah, she, she takes the oils from the marijuana. Takes um the THC oil and the CBD oil, and she be making like mad gourmet meals off of that. Shit. Nice, yeah. nice. I don't see anything wrong with marijuana. None yeah. of that. You find more people are more of that. People are more violent on alcohol and then marijuana. I've never seen anybody wild out on marijuana. Never. Of course not. Never seen anybody wild out on marijuana. Marijuana calms you down. Yeah, I've never seen anybody wild out on marijuana, and I mean like I've been around a plethora of like various colorful individuals that. Indulged in many different, like, uh, how can I say, uh, contraband. So, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, like, um, I think the worst high I ever saw was, um, well, the worst high I had to witness and fight this guy. The worst thing to do is fight a person on coke. A person that's coked up, they don't feel it. it. They will keep coming. Yeah. I turned, and I mean, I turned this guy's, I turned this guy's face to lunch meat. I was like, I was like, I was like ground pounding. I was like punching it. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like <laughs> to where like after a while, I just was like, go away, get out of here. And it was like he just wanted to grab me. He just wanted to grab me. I was like, you know, because like the first two times he came out, beep, beep, you know, I was like, beep, beep. you know what I'm saying? Then he came again. I was like, boom, beep. You know, I threw him down and everything like that. He kept getting up, kept getting up, kept coming at it. But then when he did eventually grab me, it felt like somebody was like tightening a vice grip around me. I was like, what the fuck? So I just started like pounding that head in. I didn't want to break his like nose too much. I just like, you know, juiced his, made his face juicy. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of blood here and there. You know what I'm saying? And then um, when he, uh, when, when I finally like, like peeled his fingers off of me and shit like that. His face was fucked up, but like he just still kept coming. He still kept coming. Cause he don't feel anything. He all poked up. I don't trust. People. I don't like seeing people on um on shrooms or like that hallucinogen shit. They're liable to kill you. Guys. I'm serious. Mm. 
it took me it took me romas who was like the um he was the russian bouncer we had there right and i mean i don't give a fuck what nobody says i think he was former kgb you know what i'm saying he it took me romas and big alex and alex is a big motherfucker he's like alex is like six uh i'll say like he was six four like but he but he was like big as fuck you know what i'm saying and it took all three of us to peel this dude that had done some shroom shroom off this one girl. I mean, like we were wow. little, and I, like it was like he was just like pulling his mouth, enough. and one eye was bigger than the other one, and like his lips had turned blue and purple, and he was screaming and shit. Then he started smacking the ground when he got outside. His mother came. He attacked her. I was like, man, fuck Damn. that man. Yeah, that psilocybin in him, more mushrooms. <laughs> Man, and I'm telling you, we were literally because, like, they I was outside because I used to watch the door. You know what I'm saying? And he said, Danae, Danae, Danae. Like, Roma said, Danae, come, come, come. We go inside, and I'm looking. I was like, this little motherfucker. I wasn't, you know, I saw like a because, like, at the bar, you're going to have fights here and there and shit like that. And, you know, sometimes you just stand there to make sure your boy don't get messed up or nothing like that. But sometimes you let him get his shit out. You know what I'm saying? You let him tighten him up a little bit, and then, you know. But this motherfucker was latched on to this girl and like literally just holding like he had her face. He had a he had both her like both his hands around like her, her face, but like pushing it in. You know what I'm saying? And we like hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And the, the strength on this motherfucker, he wasn't that big. But the strength on this motherfucker under that shit was unparalleled. I never but yeah, coke heads and people on hallucinogens, I don't fuck with. Wow. I would be around them. I don't mind them being around me and shit. But when they start losing, if they start looking at me sideways and shit like that, I will. Mm -mm. You know, when they start looking at me with that Disney eye look and shit like that, nope. <laughs> the big, the big dinner plate eyes. Yeah, exactly. I don't, like. Yeah. I never. I never did any hard drugs. I never did coke. I never did crack. Like I, I just remember for my thirty second birthday, I did acid, and I didn't even How know. That? How did it feel? Was it fun? <laughs> <laughs> I saw sounds and I heard colors. Nice. <laughs> it's one of the things I wanted to try too. I, I never did that night, but I wanted I was, to try. I actually. only tried uh, that once, and I was like, never again. You know what? I'm always scared to try shit like that because I know I got a fucked up mind, and I know like um, I, I already think of fucked up shit any fucking way. So I'll probably do some shit like that. I'll be like, oh my god, like you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Be like ripped my door off or some shit, or like woke up and be done twisted my mother's neck or some shit. Let me tell Lord. you like the crazy part of the whole thing because like my homeboy he gave me it was in the form of a sugar cube. It was an actual sugar cube, and they just put acid on it. Oh. So That's my good friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah right. I do. I do. So my homeboy was like, just popped it in my mouth, like, "Yeah, happy birthday! Shut the fuck up!" And <laughs> <laughs> and I had the most wonderful time. I think after when I got off that shit, I wound up at the Plaza Hotel with a bottle of Gen Gentleman Jack. I don't know how I got there. Or what? A bottle up your ass? You mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> what a good time! And happy birthday, Mika. <laughs> 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 Man, <laughs> no, I think it was a little bit more civilized than that. <laughs> Man, I spoke to this one girl on the Xbox, right? And she said her friend gave her some shit that was so fucking strong. What's her fucking name? Oh yeah, you know her too, Kenny. You know her. Sure. Yeah, you know her. I don't want to say her name because she might be like, "Yeah, hey, nobody told you to say my fucking name." Uh -huh. But yeah, she. Uh, she said that the girl gave her something that was so strong that thing that the that the world was melting for three days. She said. <laughs> she said <laughs> like three, shit. You know what? I'm a um I'm a tag her in a post later on today, and you'll see you you'll be like, oh, I remember her. She said this girl gave her something that was so fucking strong that she said the world was melting, melting for three. I said, God. Damn! What the fuck? I was like, how did she hit it for three days? How did she hit it for three days? That's a three day high. God damn! Yeah. She said, yeah. she I said, do you think maybe like you were fucked up for three days and it was probably like three hours? She said, nah. 
for three days. She said, I had to go to the hospital. She said, everything <laughs> around me was melting. <laughs> she said, everything around me was melting. Oh, man, that's funny. I instantly added her as a friend. I said, damn. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, as quiet as this kept, just between you and I, I do think it affected her um her mind a little bit because she's not as she's not she's not that sharp. Believe me, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. But she spoke Plus, about that incident oh, instantly. Yeah, she was like, "This bitch, she said, this bitch that I knew gave me some shit, and the world was melting for three days." I was like, "God, tremendous." <laughs> So what the fuck she give you? The can't stop, won't stop? What the it fuck? It was fucking <laughs> dust, yo. I'm telling you. Yeah, that, it probably was. Yeah, you dust. got dusted. Yeah, it was dust. I think it was dust. I think she did get dusted. Yep. I think they <laughs> fucking, yeah. I think her friend alley the shit out of her ass. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, man. It, was either, you know it was either dust or something that was laced with dust. But either way, she got dusted. She got dusted for sure. Man, That's all I'm think, certain. I think somebody, no, on some real shit, I think that girl didn't like her and just gave her everything that was on the table and was like, here. Yeah. Whatever was left over after her bagging up and all that other crap, she was like, here, yeah, this for you. And mm, like, mm, mm. Three days, shit. though. Damn. Shit, three days. As a matter of fact, Damn. I'm going to make a Facebook post and I'm going to tag in it and I'm be like, yo, Tell them about that time you told me that you said uh, your um your homie gave you something and you said shit was the world. She said the world was <laughs> melting for three days. I said, damn. I said, you mean three hours? I said, maybe you were oh, three days an hour or something like that. You she said, no. She said, I had to go to the hospital. She said I was stuck at one point, like just stuck. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure. Yeah, I was like, Damn. but you know, I don't knock anybody for what they do or anything like that. I'm I'm one of those people. You like it, I love it. I'm not one of those people that'll be like, oh, it's that. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't want to see you fuck yourself up. Like you, you know, I'm like, you know, being in a bar business and being a bar, being a bartender in a club business and stuff like that for years. You, you, you get around like different people that are like do a little mm -hmm. this, do a little that. They'll offer it to you. No, that's not me. But I don't knock them. You know, I don't knock them or act like they have, like try to make them feel like they're alienated. That's what you do. That's you. I, as a matter of fact, I'll make sure you are right. Because I had a lot of people that actually used to like when they did get high, they would like to get high around me because they know I wouldn't let nothing happen to them. You know what I'm saying? And with and with that happening, you'd be surprised at the friends that you make. Not to mention the money you make too, because people that's high, they'll spend that money, especially if they know they yes, are. Yes, they will. They will spend that money, man. They'll spend that money. Believe. Me. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Uh huh. Well, so. What else you guys want to talk about? Hold on. Look at your phone. <laughs> I think I didn't get a call from GI Joe. GI Joe. <laughs> Yeah, right. I we think the name is a mission. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> They've been kidnapped by Cobra. We have no alternative. <laughs> Call it G.I. Joe. Do you, you know, speaking of which, do you know that the G.I. Joe song changed for um the cartoon? Because Did it? it was basically yeah. Because um it was basically too male influence, so they changed it up oh, for the cartoon. God. No, no. When I was a kid. When I was a kid, think of when it. Right? I never realized never it changed, though. Yeah, he said, because the original song used to say, he's America's best. He's in control. He's a man <laughs> who's tough and bold. Remember the name, the legend of G.I. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that anymore. It's all kinds of problematic now. Yeah, he's America's he's he's best. He's, he's in control. <laughs> he's a man who's tough and bold. <laughs> yeah, that's problematic now. You can't do that. I can hear people complaining now about well, no, they changed it up for the 80s cartoon when we were growing up. Yeah. Because if you remember that, the, the, the well, comic book version, when they first were advertising the comic, they, they were saying, like, you know, like, he's America's best, he's in control, and this, that, mm -hmm. and the other. Like, you know, like, influencing yeah. male dominance and shit. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> he's America's best, he's in control. <laughs> he's a man who's tough and bold. <laughs> Fucking love it. Remember, kids, knowing is half the battle. Yeah. 
Yeah, I used to, man, I love the cartoons we grew up with, man. I wouldn't change it for shit. I loved them. Absolutely loved them. Yeah, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't change it either. Mm -hmm. I love the cartoons in the 80s. And whether you know it or not, and again, you know what? We grew up with some great, especially during the 80s, we grew up with some like wonderfully animated and like highly articulate cartoons in terms of detail. I mean, like, because one that holds up to me in terms of animation and art, Bionic Six, yes, Visionaries, yep, Visionaries. And it, what what got me is that you know usually the intros is what they blew the budget on. You know what I'm saying? Most of the budget mm -hmm. went into the intros and everything like that. But like uh, there were some cartoons and they were short lived. <laughs> That um that actually this was like fuck we just gonna ride this shit out we want top notch animation and humanoids had top notch animation mm -hmm. um visionaries had top notch animation by six yeah cops was beautiful yeah you like cops I like the I like I the pilot I like the pilot I like the pilot the pilot commercial I like the one episode there was one where one of the villains got hold of everybody up I have fond memories of that one you're like a, a lava suit. And he was fucking all the cops up. Like it was like the, the jackhammer <laughs> dude. Remember, jackhammer got hold of a power suit that let him melt people, and he was just fucking the whole town up, and no one could stop him. I don't think I, I never. You know what? I never liked the um. I never liked the the um the cops and crooks cartoon, but I did like the comic book and the um commercial that they showed when they were first initially uh releasing the comic the the comic book for cops and crooks. I mean the um, what was it? Fighting crime in a future time. Crime doesn't pay when the cops are around. Throw that crook in the clink. Remember? And they're like, you see the crook the bars. You're like, you'll never hold us cops in. Yeah. And they're like, he break out of jail. And they had the dog chasing after him, like the cybernetic dog and shit. The, the names <laughs> of the characters, you too. Yeah, Fucking yeah. Buttons Mick Boom Boom. Now, <laughs> now that you, but look. Kenny, do you remember the artwork that was on the action figure card? It yeah, was yeah, the car, the car was, was it great. Was absolutely yeah. superb. It was superb. I mean, like highly detailed. They were all muscular. Then you come to find out in the comic book that they were taking like like a certain form of steroid and shit like that to make them like that and all that other shit. Then like the weapons that the crooks were producing were like pretty, pretty awesome. much like military grade and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Cy has, but most of them are like all they were only all cyborgs and shit too for the most part. They yeah, all all were, all right? Yeah, buttons. Yeah. Mc, yeah, buttons. McBoom Boom was a cyborg. Doctor uh, Cannon to his chest. Yeah, Doctor Bad. Doctor Bad Vibes was a cyborg. Um, Jack Hammer. I think Mr. Like, Dominion was just on steroids. Who? Ms. Demeanor, the chick, she was just on yeah. steroids, right? Yeah, Ms. The bad, Ms. Demeanor the was on uh, was on like that cyborg, like that's that newfangled. Steroid Berserko took some, Big Boss took some. Um, what's the name? Because you got to read the book and you'll like the comic. You see how, um, how what's his name got shot up in the well, like got blown up in the alleyway and shit like that. What's his name? BP Vest. They fucked him up in the alleyway. They kind of it was kind of like mimicking Robocop a little bit. Yeah, it was the whole thing was, almost was a, a parody of Robocop, it wasn't just the way it was even themed up. Yeah, but it was also had like a 1920s, 30s gangster twist to it. That's why I think yeah. I liked it so much. Because like Berserko, Berserko was my favorite one for some reason. Berserko was my favorite one because I like the way he had like the big collar on his um on his fucking jacket, and he had on like a t-shirt that was like that said "Bad is good." <laughs> 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 and then when you like when you read the comic book and you read like his criminal profile and shit like that, he was fucked up. He was involved in a lot of bad shit. And that was the big boss's nephew. He stayed in and out of jail and shit like that. <laughs> I even liked his outfit because he had on like a jean, like a jacket, like a suit jacket, but it was folded up. And he had on yeah. shoes and shit like that, like a gangster and shit like that. But Buttons Mc... All right, it went like this. Berserko was my favorite. Then came Buttons McBoom Boom, because you know I always like the criminals first. It's like, like the, like the, the burgundy line. suit, right? Yeah, the burgundy, burgundy pinstripe suit he had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great look. And then, like, you know, like when you saw his um, when you saw his bite, like his um the artwork of him, like his hat came over with like you only kind of like saw his nose and mouth and shit like that. And he was like their hitman silent assassin and shit. So you had um how did it go? Buttons McBoom Boom was um Berserko, Buttons McBoom McBoom Boom. And who was the other one? The driver. 
Turbo Two Tone, my favorite. Turbo Two Tone, Buttons McBoom Boom, and Berserker were my favorites. Buzz McBoom Boom, I'm dying off of these names. That's a yeah, great stripper no, name too. No, no. Want to use for a stripper? That'd Buttons be a tremendous McBoom stripper name. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah, Buttons McBoom Boom. <laughs> So what were some of the things you loved um, growing up, um, Kenny? Like some of the cartoons and shit like that. Real big on G.I. Joe was my Me shit. Too. I love all the short-lived ones, too. Like um, Visionaries only had 13 episodes. I loved all mm-hmm. of them. Had all the toys from that, too. I liked the toys that didn't have any cartoons, just just the ones that were just like toys, like freaking muscle, like little pink uh, muscle men yeah. things. You used to have a gang of those, man. Like yeah, I, man. I had, um, I used to keep them all in a sh- Regal tin, sober right. tin. I had it was filled to the brim like a coffin. Take that thing wherever I used to go. So yeah, man, I used to love all the little quirky lines that used to come out too. Do you remember like, uh, Muscles having an anime, like an anime themed cartoon too? Um, I I know there was a cartoon. I didn't think it hit America. No, it did come over to America. I think it only had one season over here. But over in Japan, it was like a, a long running seat, long running. Yeah. Um, what's the name? It's a uh, Kaniku man in Japan. Yeah, yeah Kaniku, yep, Kaniku man, yep. And uh, what was that? Um, what was that? Muscle. Do you remember towards the end of them, like the toy line, they came out with the muscles ring, where like you can like take him and like sling him at each other in a way. With the yeah, ring. yeah, and, and, you, and he had to keep him inside the belt. <laughs> also, yeah, yep, fresh. Keep him inside the belt and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I loved I, I loved all of those small things like that. And remember Starcom. Oh, yeah, Starcom was my shit. Yeah. Absolutely one of my favorites, man. So, they, Mika, what did you play? Had, what, 20 what, feet and all that. Yep. Mika, what were some of your favorite toys and favorite cartoons growing I up? I don't know. I was such a fucking girl back then. Um, really? I, 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 I used to watch, you know, like the basics, like Thundercats, Silverhawks, Bionic Success. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a huge Rainbow Bright fan. I had all the dolls. All of them. <laughs> I had Rainbow you know? Bright, Baby Bright. I had all of them. All the like, other kids. I had all of them. Man. Yeah. It was, um, Voltron. I was I was pretty much basic. It was like my um, parents didn't make us watch, watch a lot of TV back then. Man, neither did mine, but I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> Found a I way. Never, I never I get that. I, I was supposed I, to be doing homework. I didn't get introduced to the Ralph Bakshi, Bakshi joints until I turned 11. Mm-hmm. That's when I first, and I was like, ooh, what's this? Like, Heavy Metal is one of my favorite movies. Did you ever see Fire and Ice? Yes. Yes, I have. I've I like, saw Hey, Good Looking. Um, mm-hmm. What else did I see of his? He Heavy came out traffic. With a no. Heavy traffic was great. Uh, Heavy traffic was good. good. Heavy traffic was very good. Okay, so I have to watch. He's that. actually he's actually still alive. He's seventy nine he years old. Yep. Wow. He's a, he's seventy nine years old. He released a movie a couple of years ago. Um, something Coney Island, if I remember correctly, it was called mm-hmm. Coney Island or something. Last but he had, Island. He, there you go. Yeah. yeah. How was it? I never saw it. I just I, I was going to, but I never saw it actually. You know what? It's some it's some films that um that I'm looking at his filmography right now that I haven't seen of his. Like I've never seen Melvin, Malcolm and Melvin. I've never seen Christmas in Tattertown. I've never seen Last Days of Coney Island. But everything else, I've seen American Pop I absolutely love. Um Coonskin is my favorite, Wizards I love, Lord of the Rings, Fire and Ice, Heavy Traffic. American Pop, hey, good looking, Fritz the Cat. Fritz the Cat. I remember Fritz the Cat. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Yes. Wow. We're a bunch of nasty Actually, people watching his movies. It's, it's, <laughs> there's one they're not listening up here. It's Fritz the Cat. Um, It was one called Fritz the Cat, I think. Had a so sequel to Fritz the Cat, too. Yeah, it was two of them. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. It was Fritz the Cat, but um, Hey Good Looking, for some reason, out of all of them, the storyline on Hey Good Looking stuck with me because it went from them two being friends to where, like, the fucking, um, I think the Jewish kid with the fucking uh, red hair, I think he was, 
was like nuts. He was fucking insane. Oh, I, I totally forgot that he did Cool World. Yeah. Oh yeah, Cool yeah, World. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah I love the soundtrack. Love shit. Well, cool yeah, World. I like the soundtrack too. Cool World was dope. Yeah, Cool World was good shit, man. I'm telling you, I loved um Ralph Bakshi was amazing. He was a pioneer. Yes, he was. Pioneer. Really in that. If you ask me, if it wasn't for people like Ralph Bakshi, um, what's his name? From Filmation. God, the one who did He Man and all that other stuff. Oh, Lou, Lou somebody. Yeah, Lou Shine. Lou, Lou Shine. Lou Shine yeah. wouldn't have been able to make it. I don't care what nobody, because like Lou Shimer adapted a lot of uh, Ralph Bakshi's art style and animation and it kept like, you know, mm-hmm. the uh, motion capture um, style that Ralph Bakshi was doing. Ralph Bakshi was a pioneer, definite pioneer, man. And he's, to me, he's like one of those unsung heroes. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Within, like, you know, pop culture and art and animation and everything. Wizards Wizards was good, but you just had to understand it. A lot of people didn't get Wizards. I got it completely. I got yeah, it. The Necron 99, great character. Love the design yeah. of stuff. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm I'm just like skimming through all the movies that he made and yeah, all he that. He made a lot of good stuff. He it's made a lot of good stuff, stuff. Yeah. He made a lot of good stuff. Dope. I saw. Um, um, <clears throat> there's a couple of people I would want to meet before they either expire or I die, and he actually would be one. I would love to meet him in person. Queen what would you? What, what would Queen be? Was another person I would love to meet in person. I would love to be in the movie that he's that he directed. If you ever had the chance to meet Ralph, what would you ask him? What inspired him to uh, make the type of animation and to really go after political subjects and social subjects that were going on during that time? Like, what inspired him? What What made him really want to do that style of animation to fit the issues that he? Were, were portraying because as I stated before, you do know that Ralph Bakshi actually swindled producers, directors, and um, uh, what's the name, production companies to put his work out there. He would mm-hmm. like lie to them and tell them like, oh, it's gonna be a film about a cat and this is that and the other. And they'd be like, sure. Then when he put it up there on screen, they'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> That's why you never saw him use the same company over and over again. Oh. And then, like, you know, after a while, you heard nothing from him. It wasn't until the late 80s, late 80s, he was able to, like, really put something out there again. That's when he made Cool World and shit like that. That was in the 90s, yeah. That was 92. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yep. You know, like, some people thought that the movie sucked, but I don't know. Like, I, I, I really you know, like Ralph it. Bakshi I think that's, like, my top 10. Ralph Bakshi fan, you totally got it. Like, yeah. you, you did Ralph Bakshi for the story. And the subtle and his like quirky artwork, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Most of like you know, like how the way it was animated, you could definitely tell that it was Ralph. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so, so I mean, I mean, I think Ralph. we got the Tyson Tyson Ali situation out the way. We got we gave our opinions, our thoughts on what we think, who mm-hmm. we think, mm-hmm. why. Any other subjects you guys want to bring up or anything like that, or you think we're done for tonight? Uh. Cause you, for some reason, you don't want to tell us what the fuck happened at your birthday, and that's what whatever happened at Mika's no, birthday. No, nah, what? No, 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 nigga. Whatever happened at Mika's birthday, stay at Mika's birthday. No, nothing <laughs> happened. <laughs> nothing happened. Like I, it was, I just got drunk. That's all that happened. Nothing. But like you know, when I go, when I go and check out Count Kenny, and I open the door, and he just slowly look at me and turn his head, and all I see is his eyes. I just close the door right back because I already know what it is. <laughs> Don't look at my face. Get out. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> like, you idiot. <laughs> like, I, like, I said, like, my life is boring. You my think life so, is so boring. Yes. Yes. When did it become boring? What did you do to make your life boring? What, what happened? Who heart you broke? Whose heart I broke? Yeah. I didn't break nobody's heart. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Mika. I don't know. I got to, you know, I got to call a justice league to check up on you. See what the hell is going on. <laughs> Why? Last time I sent a justice league to check on Kenny, they, did, they didn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good with people. He's like, don't look at my face. <laughs> don't look at my face. 
<laughs> he always used it as a reason to get rid of somebody. He looked at my face. <laughs> <laughs> The person didn't even see your face. Your no, face. no, oh, no. God. Trust and believe. If you do send the Justice League out, they will come back to you with a very good report. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, before anything, um, I do have an announcement to make oh, because I did say that. I want to. Um, on September first, um, I'm throwing. Uh, no. Well, I'm not throwing anything, but um, I'm helping out with um a fundraiser for one of my friends who is um. Dying from chronic kidney disease. Mm, I'm sorry to hear that. that um, mm. his his name is Christopher Rogers, aka Mike Hands. He is um one of the newest members of the Death Squad team. Um, yeah, like he works with Eric Sermon and EPMD and all that. Um, right. and um, he's putting together a fundraiser to like you know like help him with his um treatments and everything like that. Um, I, let me just pull something up because it's going to be a star studded whatchamacallit that's going to happen. Um, shit. I hate when I don't have everything together. I know I'm coming on the show. Take your time. Go ahead. Express yourself. Say what you have to say. It's no rush. You can give me all the information. I will list it down in the bottom. Again, the only reason why I wasn't able to advertise as much as I wanted to this week is because my mother got sick. Again, she had a stroke. So I had a, you know, that's why everything yeah. a little bit thrown no off. But I didn't want us to get behind on topics. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, like, you know, Sunday, if you guys don't mind, can we do another show? If not, I understand. You know what I'm saying? Because by then, sure. Claudia, yeah, because by then, Claudia, available. We'll have some more topics. Not to mention, there's some games we got to go over. We got to talk yeah. about. We, we got to talk about Nintendo it. killing yeah. Luigi. That shit was awful. <laughs> hey, they make the Grim Reaper snatch his gets, soul. He gets Leave erased. Luigi period. Alone. Oh my god. Yeah. So, um, the people that's performing at the fundraiser, we got Royal Flush, Mr. Cheeks, Mike Geronimo. Um, do it all from Lords of the Underground, Craig G, right. the Beat Nuts, um, Rock from Hell to Skelter, Black Rob, MOP, Farrow March, Prince Poe, well, basically um, organized confusion, um, Tragedy oh, Gaddafi, awesome. uh, Pudgy the Fat Bastard, Lil C's, Bat Bunny, Babs Bunny, <laughs> Dress from Black Sheet, and Granddaddy IU. Oh, something new. <laughs> <laughs> From the granddaddy, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> With um, special invited guests, Brand Nubian, Smith & Wesson, and EPMD, hosted by Heather Hunter. All good groups, man. Yep. All good. Hey, Kenny, did you like any of those groups growing up? Uh, I'm from the West Coast. I did listen to a lot of that shit, though, but most of my listeners are from the West. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I listened to West Coast, too, when I was growing up. I didn't give a fuck. If it sounded good, I listened to it. Yeah, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the um ticket link for you, Danae, so that okay. you could um post it up and everything. Will do. Will do. Yeah. Um, but you know, like I really want to promote this for a good cause for my friend. Absolutely. Um, and, and you know, he's he's hashtag dying to live. That's his hashtag. He's dying to live. You know what? And I'll add that hashtag into here. Dying to live. Okay. Okay. But um, give me all the information. Make a nice little, uh, you know, a nice little summary of like what the uh, what the event is um, for, and I will definitely mm -hmm. make it up. I'll post it up everywhere. I'll post it on the oh, Toy Choice fan page. I'll post it on here. I'll leave the links down below. I always tag you guys regardless, especially when okay. well, it's a show. I always tag you guys. Regardless. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be at the Mercury Lounge in um the city, uh, two seventeen East Houston Street. That's where it's gonna be at September first. I need you to at ten thirty. All of that information, all okay. of it. I need all of that information. Text it to me, and I'll add it in the description below so that you can really get this brother the help he need, and hopefully this will help him out. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. He's I know him for years. You know, like and it's yeah. hurting my heart that he's going through all of this. So I that's I just wanted to promote mm. that for him. That's great. That's great. Kenny, you anything you want to promote for your dojo? Um, yeah, TeamSilverBJJ.com. There's nothing new, but we're doing all kinds of seminars planned up. I think we re we're trying to reschedule the event with Ninja Hua. So for fans of the old Pride FC days from Japan, uh, we're trying to reschedule seminar. I think so. Look out for that. 
And folks can go find me on Instagram at King underscore Patriarch and look at pictures of knives and weed and figures <laughs> and miscellaneous other things. It's it's it's, it's an eclectic mix. You you might get action figures. You got, you might get weed. You might get a bunch of knives in your face. <laughs> you might get gloves. Who knows? Gloves. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Gloves. I love what he gloves. does. It's look. It'll just be like a random picture, of like the the like the front of a glove, like the fingertips or some shit like that. And he always <laughs> makes sure it's like gnarled up looking. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Kenny, remember the picture you took? Where it was a knife, gloves. It was looking like you was about to go go handle a mission or some shit like that. <laughs> Oh yes, I, I always love a good selection of work gloves. You can expect a nice review of beat up gnarled work gloves and and nice trusty blades. All my knives are handmade too, so you can check out some handmade blades. And I always tag the uh, the people that made my knives, so I don't I don't walk around with factory made shit. I got oh. L, I got like giraffe giraffe bone handle for one of mine, and you know all handmade cool shit. Uh, check out these blacksmiths that I always tag up, like Magnum Works and all these other guys, because it's always good to support local craftsmen instead of going yes, to big business. Yes, I think. I agree. Mm. I totally agree. I agree, brother. <laughs> yeah, like um, let me just give my Instagram too. Um, you can follow me at Pinky Tus- Tuscadero. P i n k i e t u s c a d e r o. Um, like I'm basically everywhere. So that's what you're gonna see on my Instagram. Awesome. I'm everywhere. <laughs> oh yeah! If folks want to hit me on Patreon, I'm gonna become a cam girl and I'll be showing my titties for fucking for five dollars a pop. So come check out my titties and I'll be putting on all kinds of goofy hair pieces and all kinds of funny makeups and you can compliment me and I'll cry about it in the background. No, no, hit me no, up though. No, you supposed. I'll be whoring my body out for money. You're supposed to be showing. <laughs> you're supposed to be showing ass shots on Instagram. That's what they're doing now. Uh. What's it doing now? Damn, I I I can't I can't sell them that that uh, what is that that Snapchat subscription? Y'all yeah, wanna subscribe to my page for like you can do that. fifteen? The premium snap? <laughs> yeah, premium snap. Uh, yep. Yeah, I'll slide the camera down the crack of my ass and lose all my dignity for your change, folks. Come get me. There you have it. Gentlemen, I'd like to close the show. Show sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry, <laughs> we had like a rough start. I mean, we had a storm over here over the past couple of days. It's been thundering and lightning. I mean, Mika can attest to that because she lives not too far from me and um, mm-hmm. it knocked out power over here. So, the first part, first segment of this show may be a little bit choppy, but hey. It's a work in progress. We still want to bring you the content that you love and deserve. We enjoy entertaining you. We hope that you will, you know, share this video, slide it to your friends. Tell us how good we're doing. Tell us how crappy we're doing. It's all in the realm of, hey, alien royalty. Yes, I'm going to do some gaming videos in a few. I have some new ones up, alien royalty. I have, um, I just upped some uh, Dead Space, I think. No, was it Dead Space? No, I played Not a Hero and, um... And I played, uh, what was that? I just finished Dead Space 2. If you want me to, within the next 10 minutes, I'm going to stream, uh, what's that, Shadow of War. Maybe you can help me out with the Baranor um, story because I don't seem to understand it. I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing or how I'm supposed to fight with this guy. That's why I haven't really streamed or anything, streamed uh, Shadow of War recently. And I like the Baranor story and I like what it's doing, but I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be sending like soldiers out to fight them or... I don't know how to, I don't know. You got to walk me through this, okay? So Alien Royalty, in the next 10 to 20 minutes, I will um, shoot up a stream of uh, Shadow. <laughs> I'll shoot up. Shoot up. <laughs> Sorry. Right. That, yeah. that just didn't right. sound right. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll start a stream of, of Shadow of War. <laughs> Meantime, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. God bless. We yes, bless. thank you for tuning in. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Yeah. All right. Catch you later. Catch you later. later.